Hi, welcome back to the course Issues in Biotics. This is the unit 4 of module 4. And this lecture is going to deal with the topic religious traditions and contemporary biotics. We will particularly see the possibilities and challenges raised by religious traditions to the contemporary deliberations of bioethics. So, the principalist approach is uh, one of the dominant approaches in uh, contemporary bioethics. This is something which we have already discussed in one of our previous lectures. So, I think start with this uh, a brief uh, mention of the principalist approach, what it does and uh, how it has arrived at uh, some of these widely accepted principles which uh, globally is treated as uh, very important for uh, contemporary bioethics or practice of uh, ethical principles or practice of medicine. This is devised by uh, Tom Busham and uh, James Childrest, which is widely known as the normative method, which discusses the four uh, middle level principle, uh, which cover the full range of applied ethical considerations uh, relevant in bioethics. These principles are derived from uh, the dominant ethical traditions in the western world, particularly the post enlightenment western world. There are uh, these two traditions of deontologism and utilitarianism from where they have derived it. So, we can see the four principles. The principle of autonomy of course, is derived from the Kantian perspective, the deontological perspective which gives a lot of importance to the individual. See one of the primary uh, principles of uh, Kantian deontologism is that you have to treat every individual as an end in himself, not as a means for an end. So, the fundamental ideas of respect for person, personal autonomy, all these things are derived from this Kantian deontological principle. And when it comes to uh, beneficence, which is another very important principle in the principalist approach, it is obviously utilitarian along with non-maleficence, which is also obviously utilitarian, because utilitarianism in general speaks about the consequences, the utility, maximum utility to the maximum number of people. So, though that is a motto of utilitarianism, there is a reference to uh, the consequences. So, utility should be the consequences and in that approach, uh, physicians are or healthcare should aim at the beneficence of patients and non-maleficence is of course, has to be thoroughly observed. And the final one justice, which is again derived from the deontological perspective. I am not saying that contemporary bioethics is all about principalist approach, because there is there are certain difficulties in uh, making these approach practical in different cultures and different traditions. Of course, to some extent we can say that uh, modern western bioethics deals with these principles with great importance, particularly after the historical development Helsinki report and all that. These four principles occupy a very important position in the contemporary deliberations of bioethics. But at the same time, we should also recognize that there are other cultures and other civilizations in which modern medicine plays a very important role today. See for example, in India, more than 100 crore of people, 130 crore of people depend uh, the services of uh, this modern medicine. And uh, the concern is uh, probably if you examine the kind of uh, society which India is even today, we can see the role played by uh, age old traditions and conventions and customs. They are still quite active here. And our society more or less gives importance to communities and uh, religion and caste is still very relevant in our society here. This is not uh, really very different uh, in many other Asian and other civilizations, but in Africa also. So, we cannot say that the principalist approach is universally applicable everywhere. See for instance, the, the concept of autonomy has very limited applications in uh, non-Western context, because a uh, lot of importance is given to the family, the society, the community in such non-Western cultures. Though beneficence and non-maleficence are highlighted in almost all the civilizations, these concepts are understood in very different ways in different cultural context. And again justice, justice is also understood in a very different way. And in some uh, cultures like for example, in India and also in general in the third world countries, justice occupies a more important role than autonomy. So, the core ethical principle is not autonomy in many uh, developing countries and non-western cultures. 
There justice occupies a very important role because accessibility, affordability, these are some of the very important concerns these uh, cultures today face. Before we really try to understand the role of religion, in what way religion plays a very important role even today shaping the practice of bioethics in the current world. We have to see also the nature of bioethics just to sum up some of these things we have already seen, but let us try to understand it from the current perspective. Bioethics is thoroughly interdisciplinary, no doubt in that. It takes insights from medicine, law, philosophy, political theory, sociology, anthropology, etc. These are all academic disciplines which are available today, but on top of everything religion plays a very key role in many societies, because many of the values are uh, derived from religious traditions. Of course, secularization movement is uh, active particularly after the enlightenment and also in the 20th century when modern bioethics was developed. The emphasis was more on very secular, extremely secular concepts, but many of the values which are still relevant have their roots in the religious traditions. For example, beneficence, the idea of care itself is a very religious value, but of course, when we understand it in the modern context, in a secular context, it has got different connotations. That precisely is our challenge to see how they are derived from the age old religious traditions and how do we understand it and appropriate it into today's uh, modern requirements and contemporary secular uh, perspectives. And uh, so, we can see that modern bioethics uh, draws upon values from the society in a major way, where uh, the sources of value we can find that there are multiple sources of values and religion plays a very key role here. Bioethical issues cannot be dealt with just with principles and rules. So, though principles and rules and norms play a very key role in our bioethical deliberations today, the issues cannot be dealt with just with these principles. We need to draw upon, we need to go back to the values, customs and also negotiate with some of these traditional ideas and about value of life, meaning of life and other things which people still hold, which have their roots in religious traditions. And values are related to the idea of meaning of life. This is a very important concept, though it looks a bit ambiguous today, because the whole idea of meaning of life, of course, we have to recognize that the notion of meaning of life is very ambiguous today, very vague in a post metaphysical age. In a world where we have we are living with the plurality, we, we have accepted plurality of traditions and uh, we have accepted the importance of uh, more and more democratization and secularization of society. So, in that context it is very difficult to talk about meaning of life, because in one sense we can say that this whole notion is uh, one of the core religious ideas. Many religious traditions have dealt with this notion in very important ways and some of them have even uh, designed their entire ideas, religious terms and notions around this principle of meaning of life. So, there is a teleology which every religion considers as important and the called idea of meaning of life is derived from that teleology. In one sense we can say that when we are talking about values, they are related to the idea of meaning of life which people have derived from this uh, old age old traditions which are religious in nature. Religious traditions uh, still remain as a very important source for uh, these values and also for our uh, ideas of meaning of life, where people derive the meaning of their lives from them. There is a need for creating a secular platform for debates, discussions and decision making. We cannot completely rely upon the age old religious ideas. And this is particularly the case in countries like India, where uh, we essentially have a multi-religious, a multicultural environment. We cannot, uh, we do not have an official religion. Uh, from where we derive all our religious uh, ideals and all that. So, to negotiate different approaches is the biggest challenge of modern bioethics. We cannot, on the one hand, many of the ideas related to values are derived from these religious traditions. On the other hand, we cannot take them in their face value, we cannot just accept them blindly. We have to be very careful and cautious when we take insights from religious traditions, because we are dealing with a uh, platform which needs to be essentially secular and democratic. 
Now, the task of modern bioethics is to arrive at an ethical theory. So, we can put it in this way, which may not be very accurate because it is not to arrive at an ethical theory, one theory, but some sort of a theoretical framework, we can put it in that way. To arrive at an ethical theory will uh, that will specify norms acceptable to all reasonable people. So, whatever framework we rely upon, we depend upon in order to justify our decisions or in order to make sense of what we are doing, we need to be reasonable we need to rely upon some sort of rational justifications for that. And this is what uh, uh, James Rahel uh, writes in his uh, article, Ethical Theory and Bioethics. He says that assessing our in intuitions about particular cases, looking at a host of arguments about individual behavior and social policy, identifying and evaluating mid-level principles bringing to bear what we know about human nature and human social systems, considering the claims of religion and then trying to fit all together at one unified scheme of understanding. This is the biggest task of modern bioethics. So, you have to bring everything, it has to be absolutely inclusive. You cannot say that religious traditions have originated in the past, so we do not have to bother about them uh, right now. You cannot be so insensitive about such concerns that religious values. You have to take them into account and fit all of them apparently contradicting views into one framework. That is the biggest task of uh, modern bioethics. And there are certain in this context, it would be interesting to see also some of the problems uh, contemporary bioethics encounter, some of the lacks we can put it in that way, some of the limitations of uh, contemporary bioethics. See, we all know that contemporary bioethics is largely a western and that is one of the major complaints with non-western cultures have about contemporary bioethics. It is largely a western business. The reason is that the focus is on patient's rights and autonomy and conceives the individual patient as an atom. So, this is one of the realities whether we like it or not of contemporary bioethical uh, contemplations. No doubt the rights of the patient is at the center. Again, the rights of the patient, the very concept of these rights is derived from the fact that every individual is autonomous. And this idea of autonomous individual in turn presupposes a kind of an atomistic conception of an individual who is independent of the society or the community in which he lives or to which he belongs. So, the identity of the individual is primarily an individual identity, not a community identity. So, this is something which is stressed by the modern bioethical contemplations, which can be understood, can be treated as one of the major problems of contemporary bioethics. It fails to assess the real significance of the meaning of human suffering, because on many occasions, the context in which human beings undergo suffering, we will find that suffering has uh, multiple dimensions, multiple phases. It is not just an individual, but the individual suffering, uh, the, the individual's membership to a community, to a particular family or all these factors add to the way the dimensions of their suffering. So, we have to take into account all these things that the individual needs to be contextualized to placed in a in the context, in the larger context of a family and as community to understand the depth of his suffering, the very meaning of his suffering. So, it uh, the modern bioethics with its uh, emphasis on uh, individuality, emphasis on autonomy and uh, atomic individualism fails to understand the real significance of the meaning of human suffering. And it also fails to situate the suffering in the broader context of questions like concerning the meaning and value of life, what is death? Death is again not just a psych physical phenomenon, a biological phenomenon for the individual. It has social and other dimensions, cultural, religious, spiritual dimensions for an individual. The concept of love, meaning of life, destiny of human life, etcetera. These are all broader questions uh, which we need to understand or which we need to address in order to appropriately uh, appreciate the concept of suffering 
and the concept of human well-being. So, this is something which is lacking uh, in the modern bioethics because of its overemphasis on individuality. Again, the comprehensive nature of the idea of care is not captured with the uh, liberal individualistic approach that is dominant in the western frameworks. Care is again a problem in uh, the individualistic environment because care is of course, an individual cares for another person or there is a craving for care. So, these th things are sometimes not very rational, you cannot rationalize these phenomenon of care because very closely related to the notion of care is the idea of love the idea of responsibility and again these are not always rational concepts. So, we need to come up with a broad framework to situate these concepts properly to understand them and family is neglected also the value of other relationships. This is uh, another major criticism against modern uh, contemporary bioethics because often with its emphasis on individual and its enthusiasm to protect the rights of the individual family of the individual and the entire community of the individual are posited as something which is against all the interest of the individual. So, it creates a divide between the individual versus family or individual versus community and tries to protect the individual, isolating the individual from the community and the larger context in which the individual finds himself or herself. It is here uh, we can find the relevance of religious traditions, because religious traditions essentially consider the individual as part of a broader, a larger whole. It never treats the individual as an atomistic uh, entity, but always part of a community, a part of a larger humanity, a part of a larger you know what you call with the concept of God even a broader community to which individual belongs. So, most of the religious traditions uh, have uh, adopted an essential communitarian approach when it comes to questions of ethics and uh, other things. So, they have a better way by virtue of their inherent community approach to tackle problems like care, well-being, etcetera. Now, let us see how can we conceive uh, religious insights as a possible solutions to health problems. Religions directly deal with questions about value, meaning and destiny, I have already uh, mentioned this. See what we have to understand is that, I am just trying to see religion from a very positive perspective. We are not dealing uh, with illness as a biological physical phenomenon, where a particular individual is suffering. I am trying to see illness as part of larger human suffering, where not just the individual is involved, but the entire community family of the individual is involved in the picture. So, here the questions of human destiny, meaning, value, death, all these things come into the picture when you place the individual in a broader context. And in this sense religion probably can help you to understand the situation in a better way. Again uh, many of the religious traditions deal with the question of suffering and devised ways to overcome suffering. See, if you examine some of the uh, religious traditions like Buddhism for example, one of the primary concern is the overcoming of suffering. The great Arya Satyas of Buddhism, it uh, begins with the fact that the recognition that there is suffering, then it says that there is a cause of suffering. The third Arya Satya is suffering can be uh, eliminated and the fourth Arya Satya is uh, there is a means to overcome suffering. So, the primary concern is the overcoming of suffering. Of course, there are many various dimensions to this process of overcoming. There is a physical dimension as well as a spiritual dimension and religious traditions might give a little more importance to the spiritual dimensions. But it is also very interesting to note that Buddhism is one religion which has overemphasized the notion of suffering and its overcoming and it was during the reign of Buddhism, it was during the flourishing period of Buddhism that Ayurveda, the science of medicine also had flourished in India. So, they gave a lot of importance to physical suffering as well, physical suffering and also its overcoming along with spiritual uh, emancipation. So, it is wrong to say that almost all religions are concerned with spiritual emancipation and not with worldly suffering, 
most of the religions equally deal with the problem of human suffering in this world as well. Emphasis on community, care for others, duty, dharma, love, all these are uh, explicitly religious values. See the concept of dharma, when the science of medicine later on developed, the concept of develop, uh, dharma was directly taken from the religious traditions. There is a concept of vaidya dharma, the duties of the vaidya, the physician to the patients or the medical institutions to the patients who suffer. So, and the concept of care, the care of the attendant, the all these issues are highlighted by religious traditions. Most of the religious traditions do not really uh, introduce the ethical issues as a matter of rights. They do not mention the word right and they do not consider it is a matter of uh, right of the patient. They rather gives an emphasis to duty, the other side of uh, ethics. Instead of right, duty is emphasized. Traditional medical ethics emphasizes on spiritual values. Though I have mentioned some of the well accepted contributions which uh, medical, which religious traditions can uh, give to the medical uh, care, the very idea of uh, medical care and health care. There are certain limitations and problems with the religious traditions, particularly in the contemporary world, because we are now concerned about the contemporary world. We are trying to understand how these religious traditions can uh, play a key role or rather what role can they play in the contemporary uh, debates on medical ethics and understanding of ethical issues in the contemporary world. So, there are definitely certain problems and limitations, because we all know that religious views can be occasionally be extremely dogmatic. There are many dogmas, there are many misconceptions, which religious uh, views and religious traditions have uh, given rise to. And also, many of the practices which religious traditions consider as sacred and right are politically wrong in today's world. See for example, many religious traditions even today accept slavery, which we all know that is wrong, which is against the contemporary ethical and moral sentiments of humanity. Again, they are incompatible with the modern conception of justice, which is more individual centered today, because as I just mentioned, the modern conceptions of justice are centered around the notion of rights, rights of the individual. And traditional ethical and religious values are mostly uh, duty centered. They give emphasis to the duty of the uh, individuals rather than rights of individuals. So, in that way, they might be incompatible with the notions of uh, justice as we understand it in today's world. And again, many religious traditions support coercive social uh, segregations and oppressions like caste system for example, and many other uh, oppressions, oppressive practices which uh, religious traditions uh, uh, validate and differences and clashes in modern society, because we know that uh, many religious traditions are creating a lot of issues, lot of problems to modern societies in the name of terrorism and fundamentalism and all that. So, these are all problems created by religious traditions. So, how can you say that such religious traditions would be helpful for developing a more balanced, secular, democratic, ethical framework for dealing with bioethical issues? This is a natural question which we need to ask. And again, many traditional religious values are incapable of dealing with contemporary issues raised by the possibilities of new technology. We have already discussed some of these things, because today's modern medicine is uh, not just a set of healing practices, but it is constituted of very complex and sophisticated systems of uh, technological devices and uh, using of these technological dis devices for uh, saving people, lives of people in uh, uh, ways which were uh, unknown to our predecessors. And there are many possibilities like stem cell research is one possibility, genetic engineering is another one, where we can actually manipulate even the gene pool of humanity, humankind. So, all these uh, technological possibilities have introduced new uh, ethical issues uh, to tackle with, the modern society has to deal with them and find solutions and many of the ancient religious traditions are incapable of dealing with them, because their moral sentiments were not shaped in order to solve such issues. So, this is some of the problems which we might encounter 
see let's take some of the conflicts say for example you know different religious traditions have conflicting views about certain issues so there are problems among themselves one particular religion might support a certain practice and another might not such a context we have a problem with two religious traditions there is a conflicting conflict between these two religious traditions and again uh, you know in general they might have certain problems with the secular democratic views which are uh, which we try to propagate in our modern world they also oppose position taken by modern bioethics and the cause of disease is also uh, viewed differently by different traditions because according to some religious tradition it is our sins who uh, which are responsible for our diseases and uh, again a uh, very interesting thing as I mentioned sometime back when we discussed uh, Indian theoretical approaches to me uh, medical ethics, uh, Ashtanga Sangraha of Vagbhada says that ragas or attachments are the root cause of rogas or diseases, ragadi roga sahaja samula. So, ragas are the root cause of rogas, diseases. So, it is a very spiritualistic kind of an explanation which is trying to see a broader context of uh, disease and uh, welfare. There are certain conflicts, very obvious conflicts we may come across in today's world. Uh, striking example is uh, end of is life issues, where issues like euthanasia, abortion, uh, suffering patients, suicide, killing, all these are problems, all these are issues which we need to uh, tapple, uh, tackle, we need to grapple with in, uh, in the context of end of life issues facing modern bioethics. So, some oppose these at all cost. See for example, Roman Catholicism might be taking a very strong views uh, or they might oppose uh, say for example, active euthanasia or physician assisted suicide. Most of the religious traditions attach a very different meaning to the very notion of suffering and uh, uh, well-being and all that. For uh, many of them, the concept of well-being is ultimately a spiritual concept which needs to be attained not in this world, which is not acceptable to uh, modern secular views. A few have different views like Santhara of Jains which we have discussed in uh, one of our previous lectures. Uh, Santhara is a process where Jains after a certain age abstain from eating food and drinking water and slowly accept death. So, this can be understood as uh, suicide. A another set of uh, people might argue that this is not equivalent to suicide, but the Jains would oppose according to their cosmology it has a different meaning. So, there are different cosmologies propagated by different traditions and opposing views. So, this presents a very confusing environment in today's world to arrive at policies by the secular government like India for instance. So, the idea of eternal life in Christianity and cyclic life in karma in India are very different because in Christianity the life is God is God is the ultimate creator of human beings and once God creates the human self it is eternal. But there is no idea of coming back, there is no idea of rebirth, but in India there is no creation, there is no creator God as such as it is understood in the uh, Abrahamic tradition. God is not a creator, but there is only karma, it is human karma, the karma of the individual which decides what kind of a life the human being is going to have in this world and it is always cyclic, we come back and there is this notion of uh, punar janma. These are some of the terms physical well-being, pain and suffering are some issues which modern bioethics is concerned with or medicine as such is concerned with. And here again we can see that religious traditions have different views about it. See for example, Catholicism, Catholicism does not consider physical existence as uh, something which is great. For them the physical existence is in one sense the result of your sin. So, what is more important is the eternal life which you are supposed to live in the heaven the paradise after returning to the paradise. So, that is more valuable than the life in this world. So, accordingly their value system is also different. So, they consider the embellishment of the body and flesh as not good for the well being of the individual and suffering has a deeper meaning for them in the religious cosmology 
of uh, Christianity or Catholicism. Of course, the notion of suffering has different meanings in different cosmologies as I already mentioned. In the context of karma theory in Indian religions, they have different connotations. And many therapies that aim as psychosomatic well-being are condemned like for example, cosmetic surgery. There are cosmetic therapies which will make changes to your uh, body structure so that you look better quote unquote in the way you want you to look. So, this is probably condemned by many religious traditions, but this according to modern uh, many modern ethicists, if this is going to add some sort of comfort and confidence and uh, sense of well being in some individuals that needs to be treated as a therapy not just as a kind of modification or enhancement. Then again uh, abortion is another contentious very controversial issue which many traditions oppose. And again many religions have conservative views about new technological possibilities which we have already discussed. The distinction between therapy and enhancement is emphasized. See, for instance, therapy has to be distinguished from very strictly distinguished from enhancement according to Catholic view or some other religious traditions view. They say that therapy is acceptable while enhancement is not acceptable, but the distinction between therapy and enhancement itself is extremely problematic. This is something which we have seen in the previous lecture. We cannot in on all cases distinguish them. Again, if you distinguish therapy from enhancement which presupposes a concept of human nature which is again a religious metaphysical idea which we cannot any longer hold in a post metaphysical world today. So, these are issues which we might face confusing problems which we might face if you hold to the religious principles and insights in the contemporary world. Then again the sacredness or God given character of human nature is underlined by many religions which is not the case which cannot be the case in today's modern world. And Roman Catholic Church for example, opposes embryonic stem cell research because they believe that embryo has life. Though this is another controversial issue, according to many modern bioethicists we cannot fail to see the potential possibilities and the potential benefits of such uh, new technological possibilities. So, this has to be emphasized the benefit of humanity has to be emphasized over and above issues like whether embryo has life or not such questions. So, quite often we find that religious traditions are in conflict with modern possibilities and modern uh, approaches and uh, uh, assumptions. Now, uh, what we can hope is a religious secular traditions dialogue because we have to arrive at some sort of a balancing approach in today's modern world. In multicultural societies, multi religious societies this is an essential thing. There are uh, certain uh, countries where you will find uh, majority of the people are non religious, majority of the people are secular in that sense where you can adopt a complete and absolute secular bioethics which is not possible in countries like uh, India or even United States where you have multicultural pluralistic uh, culture. So, what we can hope is to have a kind of a dialogue and arrive at a kind of a consensus. A contemporary bioethics is dominated by secular values is no doubt no one can deny and this is also very important and to a very great extent the individual needs to be protected that also cannot be denied, but at the same time we have to arrive at a right balance something which we will discuss in the next lecture. And again it has to take into account the differences and diverse perspectives and many have fundamental differences between certain ultimate questions like human dignity, human destiny, meaning of life and suffering. As I have already mentioned some of these questions and answers given to these questions are metaphysical and religious which we cannot accept in today's secular and uh, uh, democratic world. So, but it is also important to overcome suffering because for whether it is religious or secular bioethics ultimately aim at overcoming human suffering. That is one of the common feature of all the, all the traditions. The challenge is to arrive at policies that will respect the rights of religious and non-religious citizen by not privileging any one tradition which of course, 
no doubt is an extremely difficult task. We will wind up uh, this uh, lecture here and uh, the next lecture is going to be the concluding lecture in this lecture series where we will discuss how can we arrive at a more balancing, a more a kind of a phonetic bioethical framework in contemporary world. So, right now we will wind up, thank you.